Here is an update on communicating with Tesla BMS boards. So, if you've watched part one or the earlier one, you'll know that I have been trying to use the existing BMS boards that come with a Tesla battery module um, to measure the voltages here rather than going off to using an alternative solution such as this Orion BMS which is currently running half of my power wall the other half being Nissan Leaf on a Batrium but yeah the Tesla module contains its own BMS so it seems stupid to throw out something so wonderfully engineered and I'm probably repeating myself some good guys at GitHub have written some code to be able to do it on an Arduino Due, which is basically a 32-bit Arduino. Um, where we were at last time was that I could get the code to run, but I couldn't get it to notice the board. So let's go straight to the good stuff. If I go and get my serial monitor ready, and I reset this board, And I hit monitor. Here is what's going on. Biff, we're getting data. Look at that. So if I turn off the auto scroll, God knows if you can read this on YouTube. Yeah, you probably can. So we're getting stuff like good RX, bad RX, lowest cell, highest cell, temperatures, all good. So we're getting exactly what we want out of this. Um, and what we had to do to debug it is ridiculously simple. <clears throat> Basically, we were plugged into the wrong uh, serial communication line. Now, I haven't looked in the code yet to see where it's described, but if you see on the Arduino board here, you've got your TXO and your RXO. And down here you've got TX1, RX1, and TX2 and RX2. So I'd gone into TXO and hadn't even considered those. The way we found that out was through a wonderful piece of kit that I borrowed off a friend, but that everybody should have, and I'm going to get one, a logic analyzer. All of 18 New Zealand dollars from a local supplier, so probably less from AliExpress <coughs> and... That's like about 12 US dollars. Um, so there's what you, where you can get it in New Zealand. Um, then you can use, <clears throat> basically, you can plug into various different channels there. Plug into USB and capture data. And so we basically plugged this into all of the serial lines and found that one of them was talking. So let's see, can I do this one-handed? Zoom in on that, a bit out of it. It's awesome, this is like one of those really expensive oscilloscopes you see people who really know what they're doing, using. And so as well as being able to capture data, you can try and tell it what kind of um, what kind of thing it's looking at, so it can even try and get the information out of it, the codes. So this is awesome. An awesome extra piece of analysis to the toolkit. Um, so yeah, that showed us that we had something happening on this channel, which was the plugged into that RX um, one. So we just plugged it into that, got it going, and hey presto, away we went. Um, I also changed the baud rate, which is the speed at which it's trying to communicate. Um, so, as recommended by Colin, I've got it running at 631578. Whether that's significant, I don't know. I haven't tested it. I'm just super excited that it's happened. So now that this is able to talk and report data as per here, the next thing to do is to figure out an actual, the control side of the BMS. So this is reporting data. It may be able to self-balance. I haven't read through the code. It 
enough. Whether or not it can self-balance in here or we need to tell it to self-balance, there's still, it can't take action. It needs, as these BMSs here show, it needs to have some way of knowing the current that's running through it, so it needs a shunt. It needs some way of being able to switch off in the event of going out of spec. So if it's too high current, too high temperature, too low temperature, anything else critical. Um, and you also would like to be able to tell how charged it is. So all of those things are basically something you can do in software. You know, the Orion here has got its own code, its own way of doing it. The Batrium here has got its own way of doing it. Um, and so that's what's needed next to turn this into a product that can control, basically we need to control Control outputs based on the data this gives us. So a program for this. Or maybe, as I've got here for the Nissan Leaf, this one controls the Nissan Leaf battery complete. Um, so if anybody knows of any good code for doing that, happy to hear. Uh, I haven't started my research, so yeah, don't know what's out there yet. However, this being a complete, this is a Nissan Leaf down there with a, a CAN board on top of it. Sorry. A Raspberry Pi down there with a CAN board on top and some relays to be able to control a Nissan Leaf and some good software that a friend of mine wrote. This is a segue into what I'm probably going to do ahead of getting this one on the go, which is to get into this guy. And by get into it, I mean talk to it. So be able to drive this complete 100 kilowatt hour battery. Um, I've got a really exciting opportunity. I'll show you my face because I am really excited about it. To um, provide solar to a new factory that's going in, a small factory here in Raglan. Um, and, oh, this isn't the subject of this video, but I'm starting anyway. Um, and a big part of making that work would be having a decent sized battery because a lot of their use is after dark. Um, so yeah, there is a decent sized battery and I'm super excited about trying to actually make something go here, make a commercial product, um, put these old batteries to use, not just for my own selfish needs, but for for a bigger picture to to help get the grid more renewable without making new stuff you know there's a battery it's perfectly good um we don't need to build a grid battery we just need to repurpose that one so yeah um that's that's part of the project but this guy working super happy that guy Still not working yet. That's a P85 Plus signature. Um, customer car, waiting for parts to arrive. Um, that will be working. And then out here, this little beauty is working, has been for over a year. And that little beauty should soon be working, but still, I don't think I'm ever getting it on the road in New Zealand, really, really upsetting. So the um, condensation is making it look funny, but perfect, more or less flooded. P100D, less than 10,000 Ks. Really only slightly flooded, not really very damaged, but it could make a very good looking battery, couldn't it? Bolted to someone's wall. Um, one more piece of news. <laughs> I uh, had a policeman tell me how fast this car was going with me at it, the wheel. I tried to explain that it was Elon Musk's auto drive driving and not me, honestly, officer. Upshot, I can't drive for a month. And so I've been reacquainting myself with my uh, two-wheeled machines and loving this thing again. This is hilarious. I really like this bike. So useful, so practical. Um, yeah, that's enough from me. Got the Tesla boards working, waffled on a lot. Hope you learned something, hope you weren't bored. See you later.